It's never too early or too late to strategize for your retirement. It's a crucial topic for many, so stay tuned as we discuss what's essential for your portfolio. Let's get started. Welcome back, everyone. I have Alexander Green with me today. Alec is the chief investment strategist of the Oxford Club, a Wall Street veteran. He has more than 20 years of experience as a research analyst, investment advisor, financial writer, and portfolio manager. I'm so excited to have him join me today. Thanks for being here, Alec. Hey, Lacey. Thanks for having me. So now today, I want to discuss some retirement plays with you. We know that it's never too early to start thinking about retirement. And with that, we also want to encourage people that maybe haven't started that it's not too late either. They shouldn't rule it out just because they haven't started. Uh, so let's get into that here, Alec. I want to hear more about your strategy with this. Everyone stay tuned um, because I'm going to see if Alec uh, will get into some specific names that we should be looking at. Um, but Alec, what are some of the foundational principles here that people should follow when they're investing for retirement? Um, does the strategy change maybe as one gets closer to retirement age? Obviously, we know it's going to be a little bit different of a strategy um, than those that had maybe started earlier. But uh, long-winded to say, can you give us a few uh, pointers on maybe how you would approach things for newer investors versus someone that uh, who didn't get started right away? Right. Well, that's a great, great question, Lacey. And uh, let me begin by saying there are some immutable principles uh, of investing that are everybody, every prospective retiree, which I guess we all are essentially, uh, should know. And that is um, there are six things that will determine the future value of your portfolio. The amount of the money that you invest, the length of time that you let it compound, your asset allocation, which is how you divide your, your money among stocks and bonds and uh real estate and gold and cash and so forth, your security selection, which is how you fill out that asset allocation, the expenses you absorb and the taxes that you pay. So essentially what you wanna do is save as much as you can, starting as soon as you can, asset allocate reasonably, and I'll talk more about that in just a moment, mm -hmm. use the best quality securities to represent that asset allocation, minimize your, your expenses and minimize your taxes. So let's get to this right, right to the point where you talk about asset allocation. Yeah. Uh, a, a prospective retiree should know that there is no asset that has ever outperformed a diversified portfolio of stocks. And so that should be the foundation of any retiree or prospective retiree's portfolio. The younger you are, I mean, if you're if you're very young in your 20s and 30s, you could be 100% invested in stocks because you know you've got decades before you're going to actually quit working. And so you can deal with all kinds of volatility. But as you get closer to retirement, you want to make it little more conservative, not completely conservative because people now retire in their 60s and live into their 90s. And so mm -hmm. sometimes you need some stocks to deliver that growth. But we, the, the Oxford Club uh, suggests that you have about 60% in stocks, 5% in real estate investments, uh, investment trusts, 5% in gold shares, and the balance, the other 30% in bonds. So that's what you want to do. Save as much as you can, start as soon as you can, let it compound as long as you can, asset allocate, use good quality securities, cut your expenses and cut your taxes. All right, now I want to dig just a little bit deeper here. Are there any emerging markets or sectors that you think are promising for investment opportunities? Well, you, you mentioned two things there, emerging markets and sectors. Let me just say that I, I'm actually quite excited about the prospects for emerging markets from a geographical standpoint. I'm talking about Eastern Europe, Latin America, Asia, and so on. Uh, those areas have actually uh, three quarters of the world's land mass and 85% of the world's population and everything that we take for granted in the West, things like homes and cars and computers and smartphones and credit cards and health insurance and so forth. Those are all things that they're going to want. And it's a tremendous future market, not just for Western companies doing business in emerging markets, but for emerging market companies themselves. And so I think everybody should have some allocation to those emerging markets. When you talk about sectors, like within the U.S. market, one of the reasons that technology has done so well is that if you're a business, you simply cannot afford not to upgrade technologically because it's a key competitive advantage. If you're, if you're, take back in the late 90s and early 2000s, the internet came along and if somebody said, well, I'm not going to have a website, we're not going to have an online presence, that's, you know, we're not going to fool with all that, you, you would have gone out of business. And I think the same thing is true today with artificial intelligence. AI is going to be a source of huge competitive advantage going forward. And so uh, I think investors should be on the outlook for companies that are, are, are uh, 
big players in the AI space, but also realize that every, just like the internet changed every business, whether you're in retailing or finance or manufacturing or whatever, so is AI going to change the outlook for so many different companies because it, it's so important to, to have this these machines that, that think and learn uh, like human beings and dealing with huge data sets and improving decision-making, you're gonna find that eventually Every student has an AI tutor and every business person has an AI consultant and every doctor has an AI assistant and every engineer has an AI researcher. And, and so it's it's just the wave of the future. And we're still at the top of the first inning. So I really think there's a lot of potential in the AI sector right now. Mm -hmm. Now, to follow up kind of a little bit on emerging trends here, how do you think investors should go about adjusting uh, their retirement strategy when they're responding to market trends and economic cycles here? Are there specific economic indicators that you think are important uh, for retirement investors to monitor? There, there are, but I'll, I'll tell you something, Lacey, that I think is really important, M more important than any particular market trend is that the, the media, and especially social media, focuses all your attention on everything that's wrong with the world. Mm -hmm. And people often don't understand uh, because the media gives short shrift to all the things that are good that are happening in the world. And when I say this at investment conferences, people say things that are good. What, what could you be talking about? But I'll give you a few examples. Uh, people are living longer than ever. Human lifespans more than doubled over the last hundred years. And if life is good, as the T-shirt says, what can, what could be better than than having more of it? Mm -hmm. um, standards of living have never been higher. It used to be 200 years ago that 90% of the world's population lived in in, uh, in extreme poverty. Now the the statistic has flipped, and less than 10% of the world's population lives in dire poverty. Um, in the U.S., we're we're sitting on uh, all time record incomes and household net worth, which is gives people more buying power. Mm -hmm. um, educational attainment has never been higher. More people have a, a high school diploma, some college, a college degree, or a postgraduate degree. Despite what you see in the media, long term violence is in a um, violence is in a long term cycle of decline. Uh, air and water quality have been getting better, uh, in, improving for decades. Uh, and even carbon emissions in the West have been falling for years. And they're not falling worldwide, but Western uh, nations are doing a great job of cutting carbon emissions. Um, so in, in lots of different ways, the world is actually getting better. In fact, people are living longer, healthier, safer, richer, freer lives than ever before. It doesn't mean that everything's great for everybody. Obviously, if you mm -hmm. live in North Korea or, or, or Haiti or... Uh, Venezuela, things are not good at all, but, but most things are getting better for most people in most places in most ways. And that's a very encouraging sign for people who are investing for retirement, because that means there are lots of ways to capitalize on these things that are improving. So I, I think more than any short-term market trend to realize that the media gives short shrift to or ignores all the positive things that are happening in the world that are reflected in the stock market. And people often, they shake their heads. How can the market be at an all time high? It's because they've been oblivious to all the positive things that are happening and the positive things that are gonna happen in the future with people living even longer, healthier lives and having things like AI that will improve our standard of living even more. Mm -hmm. Definitely important to note. Thank you for bringing that up. I wanna talk names now. Uh, what companies stick out to you as a must have for a retirement portfolio? And of course we wanna know why. Um, and also with that, are there maybe a little bit under the radar uh, companies that people might not typically think to add to their portfolio? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna mention two companies that I think would be an excellent long-term investment. Uh, and most people have probably never heard of them, but I think they're gonna look back one day and if they don't own them, wish that they had. And I'll give you two names. One is Excientia and the symbol that trades on NASDAQ is E-X-A-I. And the, and the other one is ABSI and it's spelled A-B-S-C-I and the symbol's A-B-S-I, it also is on NASDAQ. And these are two companies that are in the same business. And that business is they're using artificial intelligence to speed up drug discovery. And many of your viewers may not know this, but it now takes over 10 years and almost two and a half billion dollars to bring a new drug to market. Of course, wow. most drugs that enter clinical trials never make it through. So most, most are failures, but it, it costs over two and a half billion dollars in 10 years to bring these new drugs to market. And so what we're going to see with AI is this is going to be sped up a great deal. For instance, if you're if you're testing a cancer drug, it could take you years to develop a compound that even attaches to the cancer cells you're trying to fight. 
It can take years and years. So if they can cut the time it takes to bring these drugs to market and they can cut the cost, I mean, people, they, they look at the cost of healthcare and the cost of drugs in particular, and they go, how can it be so expensive to, to make a tablet or a pill or what have you? Well, it, it turns out it's because of all the regulations and all the time it takes to bring these drugs to market. But AI is changing that. And uh, Xcienture, for instance, is the world leader in using artificial intelligence for drug discovery. They've got over 30 compounds in various phase uh, one, two, or three trials now. And once these things start to hit, I think these stocks could really take off. Both of them, Absi and Xiantia, could really take off because they're working on so many different uh, disease treatments with so many big pharma companies. And the, the arrangements they've made is they get um, a, an upfront payment and they get royalties down the road when the drugs start selling. So these are small cap companies. Both have a market cap of less than a billion dollars, but the potential here is huge. And we were talking about what it takes to retire. You know, if you're working, you really have three choices. You can either work more hours or, or work longer, work more years, mm -hmm. or you can spend a whole lot less, which is not a whole lot of fun, or you can earn a higher return on your on your investments in your portfolio. And so you do need some of those investments that are maybe a little more aggressive. These companies are not yet profitable, but they're not just uh, companies that uh, are are a, a, a long shot. There are companies that have big contracts with companies like Bristol Myers and Sanofi and Eli Lilly and other major drug companies. And I think that they offer as much potential as anything in the market right now. All right. Some great picks. Thank you for sharing those. I want to look ahead even further now. What do you kind of see impacting uh, retirement planning and stock investing in the future? Let's say maybe in the next decade. Well, a couple of things. I will say that I mentioned the fact that people are living longer than ever. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. Of course, it also means that your portfolio has to last longer than ever because the, the greatest risk that most investors face is not a bear market. Uh, or some kind of exogenous event uh, that, like we like we we saw 9/11, we saw the financial crisis, we saw the pandemic. All these things knocked the market off track temporarily. But the, but the real risk is that your your portfolio simply doesn't keep up with inflation and doesn't last long enough in order for you to enjoy a comfortable retirement. No one wants to to live a retirement where they're pinching pennies and mm -hmm. and not being able to enjoy the retirement they've spent decades working for. So I, I think that the key is to realize that in, inflation is, is running hotter than normal. Uh, so that takes means your portfolio has to grow and people are living longer than ever. And that means your portfolio has to grow. And so what should you do? Getting back to basics, you want to have the right asset allocation. You want to minimize your cost. You want to minimize your taxes. The Oxford Club specializes in, in uh, tax efficiency in our investments because I, as a former professional money manager, I dealt with thousands of investors who were seem to be completely oblivious of the tax ramifications of what they were doing. So, so minimizing your costs, minimizing your taxes, and having an asset allocation that includes some ideas that give you a, a chance of beating the market by a significant margin so that your, mar your portfolio does grow at a rate. So if you live a good long life, as I hope that you do, uh, your portfolio is right there delivering for you. Mm -hmm. Great insights today, Alec. I'm really glad that you were able to join me today. Where can people find you? Uh, well, hopefully not a county jail. <laughs> I've managed to avoid that so far. No, but they can find me. You can you can subscribe to my free e-letter, Liberty Through Wealth, by going to libertythroughwealth.com, or uh, you can you can take my uh, monthly newsletter, the Oxford Communique, if you visit oxfordclub.com. So that's that's the two sites, libertythroughwealth.com or oxfordclub.com. Awesome. Well, I will go ahead and get Alex's information linked for our viewers down below for individuals who want to learn more about investing for retirement. Um, of course, Market B has several resources for you as well. So go ahead and check out our website. Stay tuned for more videos. Thanks again for joining me, Alec. Lacey, thanks so much for having me. It's been a pleasure.